Hi, my name's uh, Jim Moyle, and today we're going to have a quick look at how to create a WPF Windows Presentation Foundation GUI for your PowerShell script in just 10 lines of code. So, let's imagine you already have a PowerShell script and you're having trouble uh, because not everybody wants to edit it or change the variables in it, and you want to make it as simple and stupid as possible and as easy as possible to use because it does something useful for you and your organization. So, you want to add a GUI to it. How hard is that to do? Well, let's have a look. So, <coughs> at the moment, I'm going to have a, a stupid little script demo. And effectively, what I'm going to use is, uh, is a script I've written where I'm going to talk to the Twitter API and put some of the results of that in, in uh, a Windows GUI. And what I did first was I had a look on the PowerShell gallery to see if somebody had already created a Twitter module. And oh look, nicely they have. Now the one I chose to use is the uh, Invoke Twitter APIs. And we can just import that module. And then we can have a look at the commands for that module. All right. Now, in order to authenticate to Twitter, I need to get uh, an OAuth key. And all I did was basically fill out the form here and get an OAuth key from uh, from Twitter. So now we've got uh, the OAuth key. Now we can authenticate to Twitter. Now we can get some interesting stuff. So let's take uh, my Twitter API, my Twitter name, and then we can now use the get Twitter user lookup and get the user data for my account. And let's have a look in there. Now we've got a whole lot of stuff that Twitter's just got back to us. For instance, let's see where I live. London, UK. Um, but the bit of information we're actually interested in is this URL. And we can see that if we have a look at the URL, then we get a tiny picture of me. So effectively, my user icon. So that's a script. It's all it does is using a REST API with an existing uh, PowerShell module to go and fetch a bit of information, in this case, the URL of a user. Now then, if we want to change that, so we want a uh, application to do it, we're going to have to open up Visual Studio. Now, don't be scared of Visual Studio. It's actually very easy. Uh, this happens to be the full version, but there is a uh, community edition, I think, of Visual Studio, which isn't fully featured, but for uh, WPF, for this use case, it is fully featured, so you can use the free version of Visual Studio to do this. And let's start a new project. We're going to do a WPF ab application, and let's call it YouTube for this. Now, <coughs> what Visual Studio is going to do is it's going to open up the uh, WPF designer, and we've got a whole load of stuff on screen. Don't be too scared of this stuff. Now, this nice drab and drag and drop GUI is what we're going to uh, put stuff in. So we know we're going to need to display that user image. So let's put a picture in there somewhere. Uh, we should probably have a text box where we ask people what the username is. And let's say, let's have a button to say go as well. Um, and just for the demo, let's do another text block. Now a text box is where somebody enters data and a text block is just for displaying data. So let's say that's my YouTube, uh, my uh, Twitter handle. And if we have a look here, let's change the font size. I'll move it across. Now this button, I don't want it to say button on it. What do I want it to say? Let's say get picture, because we know that's what we want it to do, right? Get picture. All right. 
and the text box I don't want to have any default text in it so let's do that so we've now got an image a text block a text box and a button now <coughs> One of the things that we need to do is we need to say anything that I'm going to interact with with the script and you'll see why in a minute needs to have a name. So I'm going to call this YouTube window and I'm going to call this YouTube text box and I'm going to call this YouTube button. Now because I've only got four things that I want to interact with I've got some very basic names here, right? But if you've got a lot of things, then you should call them something that makes sense to you. So in your code, you can easily say, easily see what's happening. Now this text block is just for displaying text and I don't want to do anything with that. So I'm just gonna delete the name. So now it says no name there. Uh, let's make it look a little bit prettier. So let's color it and let's go for a nice color of teal. There we go. And let's save this project. Now, we can see that this XAML window here has now got a lot of information that we've put in. So we've got our image, our text box, our button, and our text block. And we can see that we've got various bits of information in here. Now, this is all we need to display this window. So if we have a look at this get picture button. So all of these have properties and there are loads of properties from color to font to font size etc etc. But they also have what are called event handlers. Now event handlers are what happens when you do stuff and the first one here is click and we've got a whole lot of other things that we can do with it as well. We don't need to worry about that just yet. Alright, so if we go back to our ISE, all the code by the way that uh, I'm demoing here is all on this GitHub link. So if you want to go and uh, download this code, go to that GitHub link and it's free to download. So what do we need to do first? Well, we need to effectively tell PowerShell that we're working with a GUI. And these two types are what we need, presentation framework and presentation core. We're going to create an empty hash table. And now, <coughs> we see that uh, our Visual Studio solution has been created in my temporary directory and we've got this XAML file which we uh, saved and which we saw in Visual Studio previously. So now I'm just going to do a simple get content on that file. Now what's inside that? Now this should look familiar to you because we just saw this in Visual Studio exactly here. Now then, <coughs> if we have a look, so what get content does is it effectively imports that as an array of strings and we can see that if we have a look at the uh, type here. Oop, I should read item. So if we have a look at that, then we can see that's a system string. Now then, unfortunately, Visual Studio puts in quite a lot of stuff that um, PowerShell doesn't like when you're importing that XAML file. And this is effectively using um, a regex expression or fewer expressions to clean it up. Now, it doesn't make a massive amount of difference. In fact, if we show you it there, it's almost exactly the same. Now, these replacements, these search and place, work for Visual Studio 2015. And if you um, go to this next line, when it's changing it into uh, XML format rather than uh, string format, this will fail if it's uh, incorrectly formatted. And let's do that now. All right. 
So now we've cast that to XML from a set of strings, and we can see that now because we've it's now a uh, XML document. And let's put this into an XML load reader. And then if we have a look, we've got a Windows Markup XAML reader. So now this is Windows looking at that XML file and changing it into something it can realize as a GUI object. So if we have a look now at what type this is, now we can see that that XML is now a a window. Now underneath all of this in child objects is all the rest of the stuff but we should do a bit more work to make it a little bit more sensible. So you remember how we named all the uh, nodes? Well now let's select this is just an XPath search for, uh, for selecting the names. Now we can see that we've got the name nodes. And what we're going to do, that WPF object that we opened up earlier here we're going to add in everything that we found that had a name. All right. So now, what's in that WPF object? I just noticed that I didn't change the name of that. That's okay. We can go back and we can change this and go back to properties and name. And I'll do. YouTube image. And we'll save that again. And we will just run everything back to here. And now we have a YouTube image. All right. So now we have four PowerShell objects which are the correct type, so image, buttons, windows, text box, that we need to interact with. So we can check the type of that button, system windows control button, excellent. And if we look inside that object, all of this, all these properties, exactly the same as all of these properties in Visual Studio. So anything you put in here is now represented, and you can change it from PowerShell as well, right? So this is how you change the GUI. Now if we have a look, that's where we call it get picture earlier. Now <coughs> these GUI objects have got some interesting things, right? They've got what we call events. And we mentioned events previously. These are all the things that you can do with that button. So you can respond to them. You can see the top one there is click. just as we saw in the events in Visual Studio. Well, that's the image, there we go, in the button. Top one there is click. Now, <coughs> there's a whole load of things you can do. A surprising number of things you can do. Uh, mouse over, context menu, etc., etc. So there's actually 111 different things you can do with buttons. I probably start with click. And now, there's a method on this window object, show dialog. Now if we run that, we get our GUI that we just designed in Visual Studio. And we can see it's got the PowerShell icon here showing that it's created by PowerShell. We can write stuff in the text box. We can click that. Now, obviously, nothing's happening because all I've done is defined the code for showing the GUI. I haven't connected it up to the script as yet. So let's just close that. And now here's where we've connected up to the script. Again, this code is all available on GitHub. So these nine lines are exactly the same as we've just had a look at previously. Instead, I've just stuck them all in a big list so we can see it's just the nine lines. This is the Twitter code, the Twitter script that I showed you before. So let's just run that. 
let's import the module as we did before now here's the cool bit right so because we put add underscore and the event name here we said that this method says that when you click this button you should run this code so if I run this code now nothing should happen because it's gonna wait for the button click before it runs this code and let's have a look at the GUI again so now we basically want to run this code which will take the URL from a username and put it into the GUI so if we take my Twitter name and do get picture there is my Twitter picture now let's have a look earlier so we have somebody here who is uh, tweeting about the fact that um, PowerShell 5.1 is now available for OS's other than uh, Windows 10 etc and we can see that now this should work for any other Twitter username as well so those 10 lines of code nine here to get uh, and translate what Visual Studio is producing into something PowerShell understands and this one to show the dialogue and this one to interact this bit here to interact with the GUI now what have we shown here so we've shown interacting with the REST API through a standard PowerShell module and translating that into a WPF application now if you think uh, if you are running VMware you've got um, PowerCLI standard PowerShell module interacting with a with an API or anything else then you can build a GUI on top of it in fact you can even change that GUI to an EXE but we'll probably go into that into another in another YouTube video so have fun with your GUIs and thank you very much